The purpose of this presentation is to help you with in-text citations and works cited pages in MLA style. We will cover the following topics. Contrary to what most students believe, the purpose of citing sources is not to induce panic and stress. The purpose is to build your credibility, your trustworthiness, as a researcher and writer. Incredible means unbelievable. The Hulk is pretty incredible because he's not a very believable character. Credible, however, means believable. If you have credibility, then you are believable and trustworthy. If you are believable and trustworthy, then you can persuade me easier. The more persuaded I am, the better grade I will give. But how do citing sources create credibility? Citations show that you've done your homework and therefore know what you're talking about. If you do a good job of integrating your citations into your writing, you can show off the fact that you've done your homework. It also makes your writing flow better and smoother. Finally, professional writers do it all the time to improve their credibility, so why not you? To know whether to cite something, you need to be able to distinguish between common knowledge and specialized knowledge. If you think of something, then it's your idea and you don't need to cite it. If you do not think of something, then you must ask yourself if it is common knowledge or specialized knowledge. Common knowledge includes any information that most people already know or that can be looked up easily. For example, virtually every American knows that over 2,000 Americans died in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. That is common knowledge. However, very few Americans know the exact number of people killed or the number or percentage who were firefighters, police officers, or other first responders. This is specialized knowledge and you would need to cite the source where you looked it up. Notice that the difference between common knowledge and specialized knowledge is the degree of specificity. It can be difficult to smoothly integrate research into your writing. A source sandwich can help. First, introduce the quote. This is your first slice of bread. Then give the quote. This is the meat. Finally, comment on or talk about the quote in some way. This is the second slice of bread. Here's an example. Every single time you use a quote, introduce the quote with a signal phrase. A signal phrase is something like North says or according to North. Phrases like this signal who said the quote. When you quote someone, you use that person's exact words. You must put quotation marks around the words to show that someone else said them exactly as you presented them. When is it a good, good idea to quote? When you can't say it any better or it's important to let someone speak for himself. And every time you use a quote in your writing, identify who said it, where it was said, and why the reader should care. We have to know who said it, if it and it helps if we know why this person is worth quoting. Is she an expert? Is he credible? It also helps to know where it was said. Did you get this quote from a book, from a peer-reviewed journal article, or from a website? If the person wrote a book, that helps his or her credibility, which in turn helps, you, helps your credibility. You always should explain why the reader should care. Remember the second slice of bread in the source sandwich. You should comment on the quote and explain why it is important to your argument. Here's an example. In the theater of consciousness, cognitive scientist Bernard Bars explains, human attention is like a spotlight on a stage. Note what is identified, the person who said the quote, why that person is credible, and where the quote was said. A paraphrase is when you use someone else's ideas but put them in your own words. This means that you summarize or expand on the original quote. Sometimes you may be able to say something better than the original author said it. You may be able to say it in fewer words, or you may need to expand on it to provide some missing detail or context. Either way, you put the ideas in your own words, but you still have to cite the ideas because they were someone else's. Many students plagiarize unintentionally because they fail to cite their paraphrases or they do a bad job of paraphrasing. Here's an example of good and bad paraphrasing. When you paraphrase, you can choose to use a signal phrase or you can choose to put the author's name and a page number if you have one inside parentheses at the end of the paraphrased information. The bad paraphrase is simply too similar to the original, while the good paraphrase truly puts the same ideas into your own words. If you paraphrase multiple sources in the same paragraph, then you would cite each source separately as shown. This allows the reader to know which information came from which source. Occasionally, multiple sources may state the same information. You should cite both sources for that sentence. 
If you cite multiple sentences from the same source, then you would place the parenthetical citation at the end of the entire passage. You do not cite each individual sentence, since this would be unnecessarily repetitive and redundant. And again, this is an example of a parenthetical citation. The author and the page numbers where this information was taken from are put inside parentheses at the end of the paraphrased information. Punctuation is a small but important part of your citations. Professors notice when a comma is missing or a period is misplaced. You want them to focus on the quote or paraphrase's support for your argument, not your incorrect punctuation. The sentence ends with the citation. Therefore, the first example is incorrect because there is a period at the quotes end, making the citation a sentence fragment. The second is wrong because the original quote did not include the number one inside parentheses. The third example is off because you don't need to cite the author in both the signal phrase and a parenthetical citation. Talk about redundancy. The final example is correct. Notice that it looks odd because there isn't a period at the end of the quote. But the period can be implied or understood. Remember, the sentence ends with the citation, not the quote, even if the quote is a complete sentence. If you gather source information as you conduct research, you will save yourself a lot of time hunting down the information for your works cited page. Write down all the information you need from the library book before you return it. Keep the printout of your journal article that has all of the information on it. As you read through your sources, take meticulous notes. The more notes and highlighting you have, the easier it will be to go through your research and find the important information for your paper. If you keep a list of quotes, paraphrases, and page numbers, then you won't have to flip back and forth to find the page numbers. If you are missing some information, then go on to the next piece of information in your citation. For example, if you are citing a web article, but it doesn't have an author, then start your works cited entry with the article's title. And when you cite it in your writing, you will use the first significant word in the title, not the or a, but the first word with significant meaning. I can't cover every possible situation or citation, so here are some resources to help you look up things. First, I've posted an MLA style handout to Moodle. The textbook has a chapter on MLA style. The online writing lab or Al at Purdue University is a great resource. MS Word now has some automated citation tools similar to EasyBid. Many databases have a Cite This button for articles they pull up. There are many different citation tools online, and the Writing Lab can provide help with citations. Just remember, a lot of online citation tools make mistakes or, or require some thought to use. The default style might be APA rather than MLA, for example. But between this presentation and these resources, hopefully you can navigate any citation challenge you encounter.